All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Good morning. This is like your cup of Folgers here in a handsome little package. It uh, the best. This is the best part of your day. The best part of waking up is Maple Grove Farms, man. After this, your day just goes downhill. Uh, yep, no more Chris Farley look. I uh, have to clean up. We got an important meeting. I'm invited down as a farmer of Minnesota, the 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 influencer farmer of Minnesota to talk to um, corporate people and university people and uh, state people and kind of a, a fancy fancy event. And it looked I looked at the roster and I only recognize a couple names, but it. I like, I like a couple of the guys that I saw. I always have a good visit with them, and so it'll be a good time. The wife says, the wife says, uh, don't talk. Don't try and be funny. Just sit there and, and look cute. Um, it's not horse devours. It's hors d'oeuvres. Don't try and do anything like that. You know, people know that I'm married to you. Do not embarrass me. I'm like, got it. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the advice for the young guys, this is a good one. Uh, the best advice, this will be a short video, uh, more of the business management side, uh, a couple tools and things to do to make sure you get started successfully to where I failed in the past. Um, you're a businessman and a risk manager. Um, anybody can, can drive around a field anywhere and put seed in the ground. Look at the, the, the national corn grower guys, the, the, our, our first gen farmers. It is not rocket science to be the farmer on the labor side of things. Um, nowadays, with the way the money's involved, you need to be a business manager. Uh, and so, but before we get into it, I got a cute little story. So I was talking to Kenny uh, in the in the comments of the other video, and he remind I talking with him. It, it brought back some memories, and. Uh, and so they put me on this job site. I was late in life to join in the workforce outside of agriculture because I tried to do a small dairy. I had no business sense of it at all or anything. And it, uh, to, to summarize how that went, uh, picture a meteorite falling through our atmosphere and hitting the earth. Um, that's kind of how I went, failed miserably. Um, and so I vowed I'm, I'm never falling for that again. Um, so I was late in life, kind of a nervous guy on the job site. I wanted to do good, like I don't want to get fired today. And uh, we were out on a job with Brad and little Joe, foreman little Joe, tiny little guy, ah, get to work. And uh, so out there and I'm running back and forth, getting stuff done, you know, just busting butt and uh, trying to just, out, just trying to replace any two other people on the job site. And my allergies just started kicking in just like that. And and like your nose started running, your eyes started running. So I'm coming back to the ditch with a armful of supplies and Brad and the, and the other whole operator, they start razzing, you know, like they took you long enough, you know, gosh, I didn't, we didn't know we were gonna be stuck doing this all ourselves. We thought we were getting help today. And, blah, blah. and I just dropped the stuff and I started bawling. Just, you know, you guys never ask me. All I ever do is run for help, and nobody ever asks me if I need help. And I just started blathering and rambling, half the time incoherent, not even saying words, just like, and uh, they're both looking at each other. The whole operator, he stops digging, and he is looking at Brad like, and looks at me and back to Brad. Like, I don't, I don't understand what's happening. Like, is this really happening? And Brad's in the ditch. He's looking at the whole operator like, he's looking at me like, like, are you really crying? Like, we didn't know that we picked on you. Like, oh my God, you know, and the looks on their faces. If cameras were invented back then, I would have took a picture. It, uh, oh my gosh, their faces were classic of just fear, confusion, like, and guilt, so much guilt. Good Catholic guy, so much guilt. <clears throat> and as soon as Brad spoke, as soon as Brad spoke, he's like, hey, you know, oh my God, we're sorry. We didn't know you were under that much stress. We didn't know. And I, I have my glasses on. Oh, you never do anything. And he apologized and I put my glasses on. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm wiping my face. Like, we're gonna sell cookies this weekend for our troop while we paint our nails. You're gonna sit here and talk about your emotions all day? like." Get back to work. Why is that backhoe just sitting there, $1,000 an hour, just sitting there watching the guy do all the work? Never mind, I'll just throw this stuff here. 
I guess if I have to do it, and I just went on that way now. And now they're looking like, and Brad's like, are you effort? Are you mother? And you, what? And just, are you faking it? And I'm like, well, yeah, why would you cry at work? Like, we're we gonna braid each other's hair? And they were just like, oh my gosh. And uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good times good times on the crew I got a bunch of them for you um, short and sweet there ain't a whole lot of substance to this video um, is uh, the best advice I can give a young guy is make sure your significant other is on board with you taking over the farm um, pretty much everybody that called and has discussed as young guys looking to either take over the family or purchase their own farm it has been you know a couple hundred acre or less kind of deal um, but you got to make sure your significant other is on board even if they don't have to be part of it uh, and you have then you have to understand that you're going to sacrifice there's going to be a time that they say hey this family event is happening Saturday and you're going and you're gonna be like but I wanted to work the farm farm's gonna have to wait family always comes first almost sort of uh, and then same with the off farm job uh, there's going to be a time where you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to work Saturday. And the boss is like, hey, we need you to work Saturday. And you're like, mother, oh. and uh, so with your employer, you got to choose and, you know, pick and choose your battles. Um, and this, this is kind of where you guys should come in with your guys' comments. You guys do a fantastic job of commenting and, and having real intellectual comments down there not just an echo chamber of like you're just handsome john like all the other fluff videos on youtube where they just run around and play grab ass with each other and and it, it's not even real um but we'll get to that on a different video but um it you know you guys have real conversation down below and people read your comments um so so do what you guys do um so now that your spouse is on board what are you going to do? How do you even know what to do? The best thing I would do is, is go to your local state university's website, the state of Minnesota. Uh, just Google search Minnesota FinBin, F-I-N-B-I-N. And, and if you want to throw cash flows behind it or farm cash flows behind it uh, to help narrow down that search. Uh, and that what that tool is going to do is, is however you want to farm is regardless. It, 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 that's irrelevant. Uh, but you can you can find how you want to do it in there if you want to do row crops or commodity grains or some sort of livestock or some sort of specialty thing uh most of your mainstream stuff is in there and so if you just want to do corn and soybeans you just select uh, the closest region to you corn and soybeans uh full tillage blah 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 and it'll give you the cash flow there's 300 farmers in our program and it's just data there's no opinion to it math doesn't lie math doesn't care about your feelings uh, math doesn't care like I really want to do this if you are running a loss at the bottom don't do it figure it out <clears throat> but you can look through that and you can analyze how them other guys are looking like the, the really the guys that are doing really good on cash flow is uh, look at their machinery expenses their land expenses and some of that stuff the more long-term capital things um, they the things are paid off you might have old money there generational things and so some of their numbers are way low on the on the expense side whereas a new guy starting up you're you're starting from zero you have no equity you probably don't have a whole lot of starting cash on hand and so your numbers are going to run a very tight margin um so then you found your cropping you've you've got some fin bin data here to tell you okay I think I can still do this. I, I think I'm on the right track. Um, then the best investment you can make is right off the bat is just find your local tech college that has a uh, farm business management program. And what that's going to do is, is uh, they're going to come out, you're going to meet with them, and they're going to go through that FinBin data. And a lot of them numbers can cross over. Um, because you got things in their land taxes, building costs, you know, things like that, that you're not quite, you're thinking seed, fertilizer, and equipment. Uh, they're thinking repairs, fuels, maintenance, taxes, insurance fees, trucking, hauling, storage. There's a whole lot on their cost of living, 
Uh, what's your cell phone cost every year? What's your utility every year? You know, all that stuff gets put in there. And, uh, and they'll help you be able to build a budget for your equipment side of things uh, to really help you out there. And, and they'll print out a Finbin projection, a cash flow projection for your farm. And now you can take that. So I, I don't care if you want to do this debt free, that's up to you. If you want to do it borrowing 100% and sit on what little bit of cash you have, that's up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do it. it it's how you need to do it. Um, and that's where the farm business manager will come in. And what they'll also help you with is it's time to spray. Do you miss a day of work? Because it's, it's going to rain next weekend. They can already have it kind of figured out to help you. Like, hey, you know, you have vacation at work. Take, an, take a sick day or an emergency day because you only make a couple dollars an hour. And the spraying is going to be thousands of dollars. So in our budget, we can build you to have a, where you can own your little sprayer and here, and then you just do your own spraying. Or they'll say like, you know what, on your acres, you're better off to not own a sprayer yet. You're better off to, uh, to just stay at work. Um, and that would be my, that is the, the one equipment advice I have is, is buy the least amount you need. Uh, you know, a, a 4430, a 4020, a 1086, a 2090 case, whatever. Um, can cover a lot of acres, believe it or not. Um, and, and so, you know, they'll help you build all them budgets and then you take that to the bank. Your banker's gonna understand all that. I guarantee you, and then the FSA has programs for young farmers. And so whether you go to your local bank or FSA to take advantage of one of them programs, <sighs> They're, they see that you've already got a fin bin built, a cash flow built. You're already in farm business management. You've already done a bunch of legwork that they were going to instruct you to do anyhow. The, these, we'll call them TikTok star kind of, of young farm kids that just see the glory in it. And they're going to come in with a, a scratch pad with some seed fertilizer and fuel costs on there and some rent to be like, yeah, I want to be a farmer. Here you go. And they're going to be like, nope. You need to go get, join the farm business program, bring us a fin bin cash flow, and we'll go from there. And so you're already going to be way ahead of the game. And from the banker's point of view, if you've already done that work, you've put that investment already into the farm business manager, they're, they're probably going to bank with you and bank on you um, because the bank, they, they're going to give you money. And at the end of the year, they want their money back plus some of yours. And so you have to be able to prove that you can do that. And so that, that's where that information comes really good. Um, I, I have no opinion. The only opinion I have on these small acre farms is, you know, I've met a lot of guys that are 100 acres or less that put kids through college with that farm being the full-time job for the dad. And maybe he picked up some odd part-time jobs here and there, you know, or, or work full-time, part-time, you know, always employed, but work part-time hours kind of deal. But they're small acres in the state of Minnesota. Garlic is a huge opportunity. Asparagus, some of the specialty crops. If you're near a population, I would dedicate two or three of the acres um, to a U-Pick strawberry, pumpkin patch, bring in a corn pit and a corn maze in the fall, kind of have a little agritourism corner over there. And I guarantee the garlic and strawberries will probably, once you get market set up and especially lettuce and mushrooms will make you more money than the, the rest of the land. Um, but if there's an opportunity to do a value added crop to your farm, I, I would probably look into that and then reach out. Uh, a cheap plug for our farm show is it doesn't matter how you, even if you want to farm with a moldboard plow, you know, you're going to moldboard it three different ways each spring. That's up to you. Um, but our farm show here every fall, uh, it's a great get together. Um, in fact, Minnesota, Minnesota State Fair bowed out on the phrase Minnesota's great get together because they're like, hey, we see what you're doing up there. We're out. You can have that catchphrase. Um, it, it, it really is awesome because what we've added is a round table. Uh, before lunch, we brought in uh, 40 minutes, but it, it gets a little long, but that's okay because that's why we're here. Is So commodity guys, 
uh, your your growing commercial grains and and fertilizer and pest management kind of stuff go this side and your anything livestock grasses uh, that kind of farming goes to this side and halfway through if you want to flip flop you you can just stroll on over to the other group and and jump on into the conversations and and it you get what you you get back what you put into it and so if you if you just stand there and never ask a question but you got a lot of questions then then that's on you but no we had a great time the last three years always a good crowd good food and uh, we'll do it again but uh, guys on that note i'm gonna leave it right there and on that note you guys have a great day